Okay, so we're going to pick back up with the types of discrimination that are actionable, i.e. you can sue uh, under Title VII. All right, let's start with the big three, uh, race, color, national origin. All right, um, so once a policy or procedure or practice has been demonstrated to have a discriminatory effect, um, it is presumed illegal all right uh, to rebut that the employer must show that the policy in question is substantially related to the job in question and this loosely relates to one of the defenses that we'll talk about uh, in just a few moments but let's talk through this example uh, Stella Tours uh, operates tours to India presumably from the United States uh, hiring a tour guide Stella hires persons are people uh, with in-depth in knowledge of Indian culture. As it turns out, most of these people, the vast majority of these people, are of Indian origin. All right, so um, that would not be a disparate uh, treatment because it doesn't say we only hire Indian people, but it could be a disparate impact because uh, we're hiring people with an in-depth uh, in knowledge of Indian culture uh, to run successful tours, to run interesting and profitable tours. All right. So that's an example of a substantial relationship to the job. All right. It, it, it does have a disparate impact, but it most likely will stand because it's uh, business necessity to use the term is, is, is what it is. Um, I will also say that reverse discrimination is actionable under the same process. So uh, these are uh, majority groups. So it could be white males that are discriminated against, are passed up for opportunities, uh, terminated from their jobs for diversification, or what have you. Uh, and that's actionable uh, under the same legal premise, uh, and it's protected under Title VII. All right. On the basis of religion, um, and so the general rule: employees cannot be treated differently based on their religious preferences, and employees cannot be compelled or excluded from participation in certain religious activities. So you can't force employees to say prayer at the beginning of the day right and you can also not say employees cannot say prayer while at work right so you can't be forced or excluded uh, from the practice of your religion all right there are um or let me say it this way employees are required to make reasonable accommodations to accommodate the religious practices of its employees so uh, if you have a Muslim that needs to pray facing east at a certain time, that's a reasonable accommodation. All right. Uh, if you have uh, another religion that requires, uh, you know, live animal sacrifice at lunch, that's not going to be a reasonable accommodation. That's going to go uh, too far. Uh, what is reasonable? What's not? I, I don't want to say it, it's a case by case basis because there is very well established case law as to what's reasonable, but most of them relate to uh, the perceived disruption of the workplace and the expense that the employer would incur in accommodating that practice. All right. So that's the basics on discrimination versus on religion. As it relates to discrimination on gender, uh, I like to talk about the Bauer versus Lynch case. Uh, it's in the book. It's, it's an interesting case in that uh, it has the FBI special agent who um, goes through the uh, FBI special agent recruitment process um, and is, you know, does well in, in all the written tests and, and um, the battery of training and that, that you're subjected to, but is unable to do the required number of uh, push-ups to be certified 
uh, as a special agent or to be offered the job as a special agent. Um, and so therefore is not a special agent. He does end up getting offered a job uh, in the FBI's in another role, uh, but he also sues, right? And so he sues on the basis that if a, well, that men have to do more push-ups than women to become a special agent. And he did more push-ups than the women were required to do, but not as many as the men were required. And that was really the basis for his suit was that he was discriminated because if he had been a woman and had done the same number of push-ups that he actually did, he would have been able to be an FBI agent. All right. Um, and the language is interesting here uh, because what the court effectively says is it's not really discrimination based on gender because the FBI is looking for a certain level of physical fitness and that level of physical fitness is consistent across gender but due to certain physiological reasons men typically can run faster do more push-ups um, and, and run for longer periods of time at a higher rate of speed so all of the things that were required physically so um, Bauer loses this case Right. And I don't know whether you agree with that or not, but that's the decision of the court was that uh, the level of physical fitness was consistent for men and women. But since men and women are physiologically different, that amounts to different numbers of push ups, different times on the 300 meter run, different times on the mile run uh, and so on. Let's talk for a brief moment about constructive discharge, All right? So this is a set of actions that the employer um, does or allows to happen, or I should say a situation that the employer creates or allows to exist, making for an intolerable workplace experience uh, that results in an employee quitting. Right. And then the employee later sues and the defense is going to be, well, employee wasn't fired. They quit. All right. And that used to be uh, in the 50s, in the 1950s, uh, a valid basis. If you could force somebody to quit, then you they couldn't sue you. All right. Um, constructive discharge. Uh, allows for a way around that. If you make for an untenable or intolerable workplace experience, uh, that can be found to be a constructive discharge, which means that employee can still sue for wrongful termination for discrimination under Title VII. So here's our example. Green Company has one employee of a minority group Green Company allows this employee to be harassed and made fun of by his colleagues. The employee quits. All right. Well, this is a constructive discharge, right? So uh, if there was still discrimination or if the working environment was the discrimination, uh, that's going to be actionable, right? Even though uh, the employee quit. Right, because he was constructively discharged, constructively terminated. Sexual harassment comes in two flavors. Quid pro quo, which literally translates into this for that. This is sexual favors for more favorable work schedules, for promotions, for raises, for any preference in the workplace. All right. And the second variety is your hostile environment. This is, um, you know, 
it maybe it's best to illustrate with an example. The boys club, the explicit pictures in the break room, the um, comments, you know, um, those types of things. This is when the environment uh, the working environment is uncomfortable for members of a particular sex. All right. Um, sexual harassment can occur between members of the same sex. All right. Um, and I will also uh, note, bring your attention that the paragraph following sexual orientation harassment uh, is now out of date, uh, the, that the Supreme Court has weighed in on that. Uh, after the copyright date of the text. Um, and that is actionable, right? Uh, so harassment because of one's sex, uh, it, it will fall under this category now as well, all right? Um, and we touched on that a little bit. I did post a video for chapter 11. That's the same point that um, is, is relevant here. All right, so you cannot be discriminated or harassed based on your sexual orientation due to recent uh, USCC or United States Supreme Court case. All right, I'm going to touch briefly on remedies. This is what happens after the employee has proved their case. What do they get? Well, it depends. If they want their job back in certain circumstances, they can be reinstated. All right. Uh, and this would be after a termination or a demotion. Back pay. Right. If you're terminated, obviously you still don't get paid. Um, and if it was wrongfully terminated due to constructive discharge or um, some discrimination, uh, you would be entitled to get back pay. Uh, retroactive promotions. If you were passed over for a promotion based on a discriminatory reason, uh, you can be promoted currently and then also given the pay you would have earned had you been promoted when you should have been uh, promoted. All right. Uh, and then uh, a few other types, compensatory damages um, for intentional conduct. So compensatory would only be uh, available um, and this is the, the softer type of stuff. The, um, this would, you know, pain and suffering, uh, emotional distress, those types of things would fall under compensatory. Um, but also uh, out of pocket stuff, if there are expenses, uh, litigation, and, and whatnot for intentional conduct. So those are only available in disparate treatment cases. All right. And punitive, you may remember from 2080, that is to punish uh, the defendant. In this case, it would be the employer. Uh, and generally what we're looking for is malice, which is intent to harm our reckless conduct, which is sometimes referred to as gross negligence, just conduct that is shocking to the conscience. So we would need one of those to um, find punitive damages. All right. 